Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! Welcome to another WordPress plugin video. In this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to create a small settings page in the testimonial custom post type to list the two shortcodes that we will need in order to allow the user to use the testimonials. One shortcode related to the custom form that they can print in a page or a post and the other shortcode related to the slideshow, the typical slideshow with the list of all the future testimonials that a user can pick. So let's do it. Let's access our code editor in the testimonial controller. We'll still have to do everything here. Let's use the settings API that we're still including with the use and composer auto load but we never actually tapped in the whole controller. So now it's time to use that specific method. Let's create a publicly accessible variable called settings that is going to store of course our settings API and then in the register method right after the check if we actually have the system audio manager activated so after the return we can initialize the settings API by storing them inside our settings variable that we just defined so let's create a new settings API instance that's perfect. Now, right after all the action hooks and filters that we have here, we can call another method that is gonna take care to set up and activate the shortcode page in our testimonial custom post type sidebar area through the settings API. So we can call a method that we're gonna define and the name of this method can be whatever you want. I'm gonna call it like set shortcode page something really eloquent and easy to remember and I can write this method right here. I don't want to write it at the bottom of the file because otherwise I have to jump back and forth, it can be confusing for you, so I can write it right here but you can put this method at the bottom, the beginning of the file, whatever you want. So let's create this publicly accessible function called of course set shortcode page open and close the curly brackets as usual. And here we can define a variable called sub page or shortcode page or simply page. I'm gonna call this sub page because it's actually a sub page. And this sub page is gonna be equal to our usual multidimensional array that we defined many, many tutorials ago when we generated the admin dashboard area with all those sub pages. If you're kind of confused about this section, I'm gonna go pretty fast. Just go back and check the admin area when we generated all those custom settings, custom sub pages and custom option because I'm reusing the same exact method. So let's define this multidimensional array. The first attribute is gonna be the parent slug. And the parent slug here is kind of tricky because if you remember in the previous lessons, whenever we needed to associate a sub page to a parent page, we were always using the parent slug. And the parent slug is the one that gets printed in the URL. So this page is Alicat plugin. So whenever we create a custom sub page, we're gonna reference the Alicat plugin. With the testimonial custom post type, it's kind of more tricky because we didn't define that customly, so we don't have a unique hook. And this is all related to the edit.php page because whenever we access the edit.php, it doesn't matter where we are, it's always we accessing pages, edit.php. We're updating another custom post type, edit.php. We're updating the regular post, it's still edit.php. So, in order to define a unique parent where we want to print our custom page, we need to reference the entire edit.php plus the post type get attribute with the unique ID of our custom post type, in our case, testimonial. We can copy this whole URL here, this portion of the URL. Let's go back in our code editor and let's specify this as our parent slug. And it's kind of sound like crazy and stupid and inconsistent, but it actually is gonna work. So trust me on this. Let's continue by defining the usual page title. In the page title, it's gonna be equal to something really, really simple like shortcodes. Then we can uh, duplicate this line and define this also as a menu title to keep it consistent. The capability, it's gonna be equal to the usual manage options that we always used. Then the menu slug attribute is gonna be something unique 
that we need to define with our usual prefix. So in my case, it's going to be something like alicad underscore testimonial underscore shortcode, something really obvious. And then we need to define the callback because WordPress needs a callback to know how it can render that specific section that we're generating. If you remember again, the admin dashboard area, all the callbacks are generated through another custom class that handles all the callbacks without the necessity of having the callback inline inside our controller. So we don't have that class for now. Let's define it. Let's scroll all the way up and let's include and use a new callback that we didn't create yet, but we're going to do it now. So use ink backward slash API backward slash callbacks backward slash testimonial callback callbacks. This file doesn't exist yet, but we're going to generate it in just a couple of minutes. First, let's copy this testimonial callback. Let's create another publicly accessible variable called, of course, callbacks. And then right after the definition, the generation of the new instance of the settings, let's do exactly the same. But in this case, we are going to store a new instance in the callbacks variable and the new instance is gonna be the testimonial callbacks class that we didn't create yet, but we're just setting up the ground for all the things that we need. So now we have these callbacks instance that it's carrying whatever class with whatever method we, we're gonna define. Now we can tap that and reference that as a callback for our uh, shortcode page in the testimonial section. So right here we can, as usual, open an array past the instance of this very own class pass the instance of the callback class and then say in the callbacks class, tap the method call whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to call it like shortcode page with camel case. And that's it. At the end of this declaration of the subpage multidimensional array, we can finally trigger the settings API. So let's reference our own instance of the settings API and say, hey, tap the method add sub pages and we're gonna pass this very own variable that we just declare sub page and then after adding the sub page let's register these sub pages perfect before checking the back end we need to create this class and the shortcut page method that we're referencing the callback so let's do it let's open our file view and inside the api callbacks folder let's create a new file called of course testimonial callbacks.php. Let's open this file. Let's open the PHP tags and let's not close them because we don't need to close them in a PHP file that doesn't have any HTML. Let's paste the usual package reference for our ICAT plugin. It's just a regular comment, but you don't have to if you don't want it. Here we need to define the usual namespace of this file that as all the other files in the callbacks folder, they have to respect the same structure. So ink API callbacks and then semicolon. And in here we need to use as usual uh, the base controller. So let's include ink base backward slash base controller. Now we can create a new class called testimonial exactly like the name callbacks and then extends the base controller but doesn't implement anything. Perfect. Now we can create that publicly accessible method called shortcode page that we're referencing in our testimonial controller. And here, the only thing that we want to do, we want to return the URL of the page that we want to render, the PHP template that we want to return whenever this method gets called. So we can simply require once just to avoid duplication. And we need to pass in double quotes the base directory so we can tap these plugin underscore path that we know how it works. We did it many, many videos ago, and then we can check the templates directory, and then we can return this testimonial.php file that we didn't create it yet. So now that we have all these shenanigans going, we can create a testimonial.php in these very own directories, the base plugin path, that is this one, then the templates folder and this one, let's create a new file called, of course, testimonial.php. And of course you can call these files however you want, it can be like testimonial shortcode, just shortcode, so whatever, it's just not required. Let's hide the sidebar, we don't need that anymore. And in the testimonial, we can keep stuff really, really simple. So let's create a div with the usual default class of WordPress called wrap. 
and here we can specify h1 called uh, testimonial short codes and here we can use this space to give the user the ability to copy a predefined shortcode in order to print the form for the user to leave a testimonial and just uh, to leave a comment and then a shortcode to generate the slideshow with all the future testimonials picked by the admin. So let's open a paragraph tag. Let's write testimonial form uh, shortcode, something like that. And then let's duplicate this paragraph, but here inside we want to use the code tag because it's already rendered by WordPress. And here we can made up a shortcode that we're going to generate in the next tutorial. So we can call this testimonial form, pretty straightforward. Then we can duplicate this section and use this instead of testimonial form, it's testimonial slideshow shortcode. And of course here is slideshow. Perfect, let's save this. Let's go back in our admin area. If we refresh now, look what we have. Did you see in the testimonial custom post type, a new shortcode section just appeared. If we click on it, the page that we just generated is getting printed. And of course, this is a regular standard HTML page. We're not printing any PHP, so you can customize these however you want. You can use tables, you can use a custom div, custom CSS to make it as cool as you want. But now with this method in the testimonial controller, with the ability of adding a sub page connected to a parent slug that is actually related to a custom post type, we have the ability to add as many custom sections inside a specific custom post type. So if our custom post type has some specific settings or customization option, we can do it directly in the custom post type and not in another section. And this is really, really useful. That's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next one.